Fortunately for me, our next speaker really does not need a introduction at all. His career is known to probably everyone in the room. It has spanned more than four decades, more than three, to, three and a half of which have been at UCLA. Dr. Lax has published extensively more than four pages of uh, publications um, on all manner of cardiac surgery. But importantly, a lot of his publications have to do with the Fontan circulations. And he was intimately involved in the conversion from classic Fontans to lateral tunnels, as well as fenestration of Fontans, and is probably best known for the adjustable atrial septal defect, which really kind of propelled us into the, uh, the knowledge base of how to fenestrate Fontans. So without further ado, Dr. Lass will be speaking about Fontan conversions, when and how, and importantly, when not to do. Thanks very much, Kevin and Jamil. Um, this has been a superb meeting with great subjects, and the talks have been excellent. Um, how times have changed. It used to be the surgeons who were presenting the sexy new things, and now it's the cardiologists. Um, well, as we know, in 1971, the first report of a Fontaine was made, but it was soon found that the valves who were placed uh, became fixed in a half open, half closed, and it was abandoned. Uh, Kreutzer in uh, Argentina described the direct RA to PA connection, uh, which uh, in the 80s was the procedure that was done. In 79, Bjork uh, tried to improve the Fontaine by e including a hyperplastic right ventricle and closing the VSD. Um, and um, this shows a patient that we were doing a conversion on with the pericardial patch, um, which covers it. These patches uh, and the connection are usually adherent to the back of the sternum and challenging with a reoperation. And uh, the bone modification, which we did a, a couple of, but it was soon found that the a valved uh, conduit uh, became obstructed and it was also quickly abandoned. So the um, Pontan connections, which may be associated with a, a, an enlarging right atrium, are the Kreutzer um, the, with a direct uh, connection, um, the uh, Bjork modification and the, Bow and the Bowman modification. Uh, now the sequelae of uh, a atrial pulmonary Fontan connection include turbulence and energy loss and you don't need to do, but they have done computation, computational flow dynamics and shown uh, that this is the worst of the Fontan connections in terms of forward and backward flow. And this uh, loss of energy translates to at rest to a difference in pressure between um, venous system and pulmonary artery of about two or three millimeters of mercury. But on exercise can go up to six or seven or eight millimeters of mercury and can make a huge difference to the long-term results of a Fontan. Uh, the progressive right atrial dilatation causes atrial arrhythmia, atrial thrombus, and right pulmonary vein compression. The atrial thrombus um, is not only the ones that you can see by echocardiography, but in the conversions that I've done, uh, the hypertrophy dilated right atrium has got multiple clots uh, between the interstices of these high, hyper, uh, hypertrophic trabeculae. And I, I feel that all these patients with a large right atrium should be on um, anticoagulants, either Coumadin or Noax. Um, and uh, Fontaine failure, uh, we've heard before, uh, class three or four, recurrent pleural fusions, ascites, cirrhosis, PLE. Uh, rarely do the conversion patients have plastic bronchitis and LV dysfunction. And there's some concern whether the hypertensive coronary sinus may make some contribution to the left ventricular dysfunction. Um, uh, this is a patient with a giant right atrium um, with uh, right pulmonary vein compression. One of the first uh, conversions that we did at UCLA back in the, uh, eight, in, uh, the early 90s uh, was a patient we did a RA to PA Fontaine connection. Um, patient had high venous pressures. Uh, Roberta Williams did an echo and showed right pulmonary vein compression. We took the patient to the OR the day after her Fontan and converted it to a lateral tunnel, and she did very well following that. Uh, now, the indications for Fontan conversion um, are difficult to define exactly. 
and it requires a lot of um, experience and studies to come up with the right solution. Um, the one indication are atrial arrhythmias with or without symptoms. Most of these patients nowadays go to the cath lab um, and um, get a, an ablation and then uh, will be referred for a conversion. Um, the question is, should a severely enlarged right atrium without symptoms go to, for, to a conversion? And most of the inferences from the literature are that the results are much better and the long-term outcomes much better if you operate early and get the benefit of the better physiological pathway. Um, Fontan failures um, generally will go for a conversion. Atrial thrombus will go to conversion. The patient that Jamil mentioned who had a thrombus, the reason that thrombolytic uh, therapy was used initially was not just for the thrombus, but also to dissolve clots that had already gone to the lungs and caused an elevated PA pressure. Um, pulmonary venous obstruction, and that's why, as Jamil mentioned, when you cath a Fontan with this kind of connection, it's very important to have both right and left pulmonary vein wedge pressures. And then any additional uh, lesion which prompts an operation, at the same time you would do a Fontan conversion, subaortic stenosis, AV valve regurge, Fontan baffle leak, or an obstruction in the connection. Uh, now, in order to qualify for a Fontan conversion, which is a, a higher risk than a f original Fontan, you have to have an acceptable pulmonary vascular resistance, and you would like it to be four or less wood units, adequate ventricular function, and an acceptable LVEDP. Um, you would not want to see a patient with an LVEDP above 12, and uh, you wouldn't want to see the patient with a Fontan with pressures of um, 17 uh, or above 17 uh, going for a conversion. And the choice between a higher risk Fontan conversion now or a heart transplant or liver transplant later. Now, the timing of the Fontan conversion, as we mentioned, early Fontan for most patients, um, treat uh, and certainly once they get arrhythmias, uh, in those patients where uh, a decision is difficult to make, an exercise study is very useful. Um, measurement of cardiac output has been shown that patients with the lowest cardiac output, and these can be measured both by MRI and echo. Um, cardiac indices in some older Fontans are as low as 1.6. In order to survive a cardiac operation where you lose all your autoregulation after bypass, you need a cardiac index of about 2.5. And therefore, these older patients who have adjusted with a very low cardiac index may not do well with the Fontan. And then cardiac catheterization with measurements of all the pressures and then consider an exercise study uh, in the cath lab. And that can be terribly important because you may take an older Fontan, get a venous pressure of 16, and, um, and then find, as Jamil showed with that one patient, um, in exercise, they have a very large rise in the left ventricular and diastolic pressure and would be very poor Fontan candidates. Uh, the advantages of early Fontan is that you improve the hemodynamics and get a lower venous pressure. Um, and you can do a concomitant maze procedure uh, for arrhythmias. In general, we would do a modified maze even in patients who have not had arrhythmias but have a very large right atrium and the morbidity and mortality um, uh, are much less in earlier Fontaine conversions. The relative contraindications are uh, impaired ventricular function. Uh, patients with RV or indeterminate morphology um, don't do well with prolonged cross clamps if you have to have a um, biatrial maze procedure. Patients with PLE tend to have higher risk for conversions and those with uh, CIDES uh, or severe AV valve regurg, uh, if you have to combine a valve repair or replacement and a arrhythmia operation plus a conversion, that's a very high risk operation. Significantly elevated venous pressures, elevated pulmonary vascular resistance, cirrhosis with ascites, patients with cirrhosis on biopsy uh, have been successfully converted. And um, one of the things that we have a lot of trouble identifying is which patients with cirrhosis, when you put them on the heart-lung machine, 
are going to get vasoplegia with very low perfusion pressures, come off bypass with profound vasodilation, have no autoregulation, and can't perfuse their vital organs like the kidney and the brain, and those do very badly. I was discussing this with Robert Fennick before uh, in the break, and so far we do not have a good way of telling which cirrhotic patients are going to have this bad effect on bypass and which will not. Certainly the ones with advanced cirrhosis generally do. But in the days before we had liver transplant, combined heart-liver, we transplanted many patients with uh, cirrhosis on biopsy, and they did quite well. And we and others include in this series of co conversions patients who had cirrhosis, and they, many of them also did well, although the risk is generally high. Severe PLE is associated with a higher risk, and older patients with very poor exercise tolerance with a VO2 max of less than 14 ml per kilo per minute, and patients with these very low cardiac index, which you can now measure, as we said, with an MRI or by echocardiography. The technique for reoperation, uh, a CT scan is very important because all these patients have sternal wires and MRI does not give you a detailed look at the retrosternal structures, so all patients should have a CT scan. If the right atrium or a conduit is adherent to the back of the sternum, you have to be ready or sometimes go on femoral bypass before the sternotomy. If a cavity is inadvertently entered during the re-entry, uh, one has to be very sure that there is no uh, communication between the uh, right atrium uh, through a, a small hole in the baffle or the ventricular septal defect patch because uh, when you start sucking the blood out of the right atrium, air gets in and the patient will have uh, air embolism to the brain. So that has to be managed with maintaining the venous pressure. Uh, most commonly, the extracardiac fontan is now the one that's used. And um, in one series where they compared the lateral tunnel to the extracardiac, there were no difference uh, in results. The advantage of the uh, extra uh, uh, extra cardiac uh, as if that you don't have to do a maze procedure or anything intraoperatively. Um, uh, you may not have to um, uh, spend a lot of time with the cross clamp. Um, associated procedures, anything that's uh, abnormal like AV valve repair has to be done. Um, and in many patients, the fenestration is left. Um, our experience with some patients with conversions was that they did not tolerate the fenestration as well as the cyanotic patient going to a fontan, and therefore leaving a snare control is extremely valuable. We had one patient that we had to adjust the atrial septal defect uh, with our snare on multiple occasions, and eventually the ventricle recovered and the patient did very well. Insertion of bipolar pacemaker leads uh, should be put in in all fontan conversions. Um, bipolar atrial leads and, uh, if possible, biventricular leads, as Jeremy mentioned. And if that's very difficult because of bloody adhesions, an apical lead can be done. And uh, one puts in an atrial rate uh, sensitive pacemaker. Uh, Anti tachycardia pacemakers, which were originally uh, recommended by Beale and uh, Mavrudis of the Chicago group, are now very rarely used. Um, and as I mentioned, the fenestration, this is an example of the graft with a snare. The snare is left under the linear alba. And uh, in the ICU, uh, one can open the linear alba and adjust the snare. And the way it, it's done is that you can either open or close the uh, defect. And this is the lateral tunnel adjustable atrial septal defect. And uh, one of our Fontan conversions, where this diagram doesn't show it, but the uh, inferior vena cava was way over to the left and we used an intracardiac conduit. The modified maze procedure, uh, originally um, an isthmus type of ablation was used, but now um, a full right atrial maze, which includes a cryolesion from tricuspid valve annulus to the inferior vena cava, from coronary sinus to the inferior vena cava, from the uh, atrial septal defect uh, laterally to the right atrial wall and up to the right atrial incision. And the atrial appendage is resected, and from the antero superior part of the uh, ASD up to the right atrial appendage, and uh, an incision or a uh, cryoprobe lesion, usually an incision from 
SVC to IVC. So it's a very extensive maze procedure and one has to be careful not to damage the SA node. Now the early mortality after Fontan conversions in the congenital heart surgery database from 7 to 14 was 12.8% in the SDS database 2000 to 2013. Among patients over 18, it was 9.7%. Fontan conversions had the distinction of having the higher mortality of any congenital operation uh, in these uh, registries. In the literature, you will see mortalities as low as zero in centers that did the conversion uh, very early, and in some of them, they were done within five years of the Fontan. And the late mortality um, from the um, Chicago group and from others is around 84% of 10 years. Um, and um, in patients where it is done very late, it may be as low as 60%. Um, Relief of arrhythmias is excellent, uh, with cryoablation 80%, without it 50 and the effusions are improved. Uh, severe protein-losing enteropathy um, is only improved in about 50%, and most patients have improved functional class. I'll skip that. This shows uh, the results of early versus late conversion in an Australian-New Zealand study, and you can see the market improvement in the patients where it was done early. Um, the, the other type of conversion is to convert a Bjork patient uh, into a biventricular repair, and provided that the right ventricle is about two-thirds of the volume of a normal ventricle and has good function, uh, one can, as uh, Dan mentioned, place a valve. At UCLA, there have been approximately three transcatheter valves, uh, two hybrid uh, procedures where the surgeons uh, narrowed the connection uh, and placed a um, narrowed area to land the uh, transcatheter valve. And if one measures the RA um, and PA pressures after a conversion, uh, two patients had surgical valves inserted and uh, one can see a lower RA pressure and a much higher PA pressure showing that this uh, right ventricle is doing work. So in conclusion, it improves the Fontan conversion, improves high, uh, hemodynamics and prevents the sequelae. Um, serious consideration should be done to operate early. Patients with marked exercise intolerance and severe evidence of Fontan failure have a high early mortality. And the decision making uh, is difficult, uh, both early and late, and extensive catheterization studies um, and even catheterization exercise studies will help us make uh, the correct decision. Thank you.